Signals in Godot are amazing. Signals allow the nodes in your scene to easily communicate with each other without requiring a direct reference to one another. Signals allow the nodes in your scene to easily communicate with each other without requiring a direct reference to each other. It allows a node or even a script to announce that something has happened without actually caring who receives the signal it emitted, enabling you to create flexible code that can be reused or repurposed. A simple example of this could be the ammo that the player holds or how much health they have. Godot signals are a version of the observer pattern, which is a widely used and known pattern found in a lot of different programs, languages, and frameworks. So you need to have a firm understanding of how they work in Godot in order to be able to fully unlock your game's potential. So what are the different kinds of signals in Godot? First and foremost are the built-in signals. These signals can be found in the editor on the right dock under node. The signals here usually refer to built-in behavior and don't always need code to activate them. For example, you can use the animation player's signal animation finished to trigger a check on your weapon manager to see if that weapon is automatic and replay the animation. You don't need to tell the animation player anything. Simply hook the signal up where you need it and it will be emitted every time the animation ends, triggering the next event you need. You can use this to time certain events like Cody time with a timer node. Simply add one to the scene. All you need to do is connect the timeout signal to the player scene. When your player leaves the ground, start the timer. And if the player hits the jump button in time, then we can trigger a jump. Another good example is using an Area 3D node to detect if a player is within range of an item or an enemy. The list is honestly endless. Every node has a bunch of useful signals that you can use for a huge array of different actions. So it's always worth checking there to see if there is something that you can use before doing something else. Not only can you use the built-in nodes, but you can create your own to be used within the editor, which gives rise to endless possibilities. All you have to do is use the keyword signal and then name your signal. Then when you want it to be emitted, you can use the signal name plus the method emit with whatever parameter you want to carry or none. It can do both. Then in the editor, you can go back to the node section and it will appear there. Double click on it and connect it to whatever you need. You can also specify if you have extra arguments here, but it's optional. And when you create the signal, you can simply modify the method it created to include arguments if need be. Sounds pretty great, right? Well, guess what? We're not done. Just like signals can be created via code, any signal can be connected via code. This can be really handy. For example, when you have a set of buttons in a UI, you need to connect to a button press signal. Or if you have a HUD element that needs to be triggered by an item that is instantiated in the scene. In my FPS manager, which you can download at chefgames.com, I have projectiles that can be fired from a weapon. I also have the hit confirmation cross that pops up when you successfully hit a target. This projectile doesn't exist in my scene when I hit the play button, but I need a signal to be emitted by the projectile to the HUD when it hits the target. So how can I go about doing that? Well, I actually do it with two signals. Following the call down signal up principle, when I spawn a projectile, I emit a signal to the HUD, letting it know that this is the projectile that it spawned. When the HUD receives a signal, it calls a signal on the projectile called hit successful and connects it to the show hit successful function, which can be done like so. The hit successful signal on the projectile is simply emitted when the projectile collides with the target and can deal damage. Pretty cool, right? And because signals are so flexible, I can have a hit scan weapon that emits its own signal to the HUD and triggers the exact same event. In fact, as I'm writing this, I've also realized that not only is the hit confirmation cross visibility controlled by signals, the duration it spends visible is also controlled by a timer with a signal. It's all connected in a giant web. I like to picture it a bit like hooking up audio equipment with wires going all over the place, but it means I can do cool things like this without worrying about needing to get a reference for every object that needs to trigger an event. It is truly amazing. And that's all there is to it. If you found this video helpful, I really appreciate it. Like and subscribe. You can download the project I was demonstrating with on itch.io or on my website, shaftgames.com. 
If you want to get access to any of my videos in advance, or you simply just want to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash shaftgames. That's all for this week. I'm Isaac from Shaft Games, and I'll see you next time.